and um we're live we are live all right i'll take a picture to get some people from twitter to hop in here let me see can i hold up my scary hour shirt <laughs> yeah you can see it there got it okay Go get this link from YouTube. Hopefully the power doesn't drop. Uh, and hopefully the storm isn't too long. Hopefully it passes. We got the notification squad already up in here. Slick Nick, sports fan, Luis Mina, Real D50. <laughs> okay, I see y'all. Look, I mean, look, I'm not no one's new. Say no foreign, like, but look, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. Some people are saying the series doesn't start till we go to Milwaukee. I don't think that's true. I think if you're gonna talk about demoralizing losses for the Bucks, those were two just absolute kicks in the face. So. I mean, I think the series started. I think there's something to say for being cautious. You know, maybe say Nets in five so we can win it on home court. But look, the Bucs aren't having put up much resistance so far. So I'm not stressed. Nah, I think we gave them way too much credit. <laughs> I think I think everybody did, honestly. I think we gave them hella respect. I mean, Chris Middleton shooting up bricks. Giannis can't hit a free throw, can't score points, can't play defense, just getting embarrassed. PJ Tucker inserted in the starting lineup, puts up a big zero. Two, he put up, he put up in the last game, he put up two points and three pairs of shoes. He's simply built different. And what I mean, they just they just don't have a response. Their their bench players that we thought might show up just aren't. I don't know. I mean, obviously it's only two games, four game series, things can change quick, but on a, on the, the only last, bad thing coming from this series is Harden. On the last episode, like I said, the key to the series was James Harden. He's not even going to play. He's not even going to play the series, bro. They literally might just have him sit out. We'll see. We'll see. We're obviously going to talk. I mean, look, I sent out the tweet. I sent out the tweet. I said, KD talking to James Harden said, look, take the week off. Take the rest of the week off. And I do. I, mean, I agree with that. Mike said, I don't think people are giving us enough credit. I think that's true. This week, we saw the narrative switch. We saw it switch from the things that they think might go wrong to the NBA needs to step in. The NBA needs to change this. The NBA shouldn't have let this happen. The league folded. This should be illegal. The team should be dismantled. How is this allowed? We got to change the rules. And if well, that's your argument, if that's the narrative that people are pushing now, then you know we've already it. won. That's the last right? thing. Like, that's. That's the last excuse they've got. Super team. Y'all ruin the league. Oh, Durant can't win unless he's on a super team. That shit is goofy. Y'all let this whole thing happen. If you listen to Talking Nets and you listen to us from when we started this in 2019, knowing we had KD and Kyrie, and then we added James Harden. We didn't think we would get James Harden, but we were beating the table for it. We were like, yo, if there's even a possibility – of getting James Harden, you go get James Harden. And now you're looking at this team without James Harden because they're like, oh, this was the plan whether we got Harden or not. 7-Eleven is always open. These two, Katie and Kyrie, bro, they're on one. I, I love it. And you can't even just say them. Brooklyn. Everybody. Brady, everybody. Oh Sam Wow. And we're doing this like without James. Jeff Green. Like Mike James is in there. I, Reggie Perry, our guy, Brooklyn, or talking Nets alum, he was out there hitting back-to-back -back threes. Even TLC's hitting his shots, putting the Nets up had 49. Me had me so hyped. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. It's, it, that was just – that was laughable. That was laughable. And uh, the Barclays Center, man. I, I mean, uh, we got to save it. Let's save it for the podcast, Heath. I got so much to say on this episode. And I think so do the fans because <laughs> we have quite a few voicemails to listen to today. Bro, there's so much. I saw. I tweeted. I was like, "We're gonna rock for an hour because there's so much to put in this episode." My apologies for being MIA, literally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But uh, we will give you everything we've got for this episode, and and I think we'll cover it all. So, all right, we're uh, queuing things up right now, and let me get the Bluetooth speaker. 
and we should be good. After that, let's see. Yeah, there's so many voicemails. It's just energy, man. Nets fans, energy. And wait till I tell my my little story about having tickets to both of these games and not getting to one. And um, you know, even being on Milwaukee Sports Radio in Milwaukee, I was like, this is crazy. Ooh, we got Timo Frankfurt greetings from Germany, international Nets fans. I think that's my first German Nets fan I've seen. A lot well, of French, me, a lot of Italian. Let me jump but in. We the got chat. Timo in there. Let me see what Same this name is. as a man who uh, who can't finish goals except for against my man City. Whatever, that's fine. Wonder if anybody got that soccer reference. Probably not. This is a Nets podcast. This is a basketball podcast. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. I don't know much about the soccer, football, round ball, basketball. All right, I am now recording on my end for the pod. It looks good. Wavelengths look right on my end for the pod. Um, I will count us in and give me one second because there's just so many things on here. Not sure if you all heard that. Both me and Keith are dealing with a storm. So if we drop off all of a sudden, uh, it's yeah, because well, we got stormed out. I'm assuming we got lightning most out. Of our, most of our friends joining us are in the New York, New Jersey area. They're probably going through the same storm right now. I'm I'm hoping that it doesn't kill my power. Honestly, <laughs> Timo doesn't like soccer. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That was that was presumptive of me to assume. He's in Germany and says he doesn't like soccer. <laughs> Get the Euros coming up. That's clownish. Whatever though. That's Whatever cool. though. Let's talk basketball. This is a basketball podcast. Yes, sir. It is time. Um, just making sure we got the stuff for news and narratives and we're going to do around the association and we're going to do voicemails and we're going to do reviews and of course we're going to talk about the two games all right here we go real deep counting us us in. In. that's what i need all right good let's get it keith all right in five four three two one talking nets episode 109 harden goes down but the Nets level up, what? Like Nets level actually hits different now because the level of basketball that you're seeing is like nothing you've never seen. But like, I, I'm blown away by it. Like you're not supposed to, the two seed is, we'll talk about it on the pod. We'll talk about KD, Jay Williams, Lana Rhodes. We'll talk about the NBA asking the Nets to take the shot clock, or not even shot clock, the 10-second clock off Giannis's free throws off the Jumbotron. We'll talk about the energy of the Barclays Center. We'll talk about these first two games. Like I said, with Harden going down, things got scary for us. Not the scary hours that we were promised, a scary minute right into the game. Uh, Keith McPherson and Hudson Flynn talking Nets. Let's get it. And then we play our music, Brooklyn. We go hard. We go hard. And then I come back in and I say, yes, sir. Welcome back to Talking Nets, episode 109. It is Tuesday night and it is raining, thunderstorming, low-key. Uh, I'm worried that this storm could knock my power out. So hopefully we get this episode in before anything like that happens. And we got a lot to talk about, folks. Sorry for the hiatus. Y'all know I was out of town. I was in enemy territory. I know y'all saw the videos and some of the other stuff, but I'm back in Jersey. Hudson is in New York, and we're here to hold it down. Hudson Flynn, can you say hello to the people? Man, how we doing, everybody? We got the live chat. We got the podcast listeners. We got all of Nets World at our fingertips, and man... We're talking mood swings. We're talking feeling real bad to feeling real good, feeling real nervous. The wrong kind of scary hours, like Keith said, to going up 49 points in arguably the Nets' most important playoff game since the finals in the early 2000s. I'm feeling good, Keith. I'm feeling good like all of the Nets' world should be feeling good. You should be hyped. It's, it's a Nets' world. This is the best time to be a Nets fan. This is just a great time to be alive as a basketball fan. You're seeing greatness on the floor every other night, sometimes every two nights, depending on how the playoff shakes out. 
And man, I'm loving it. But I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to vamp too much. I don't want to spend too much time talking because we got a packed podcast. We got reviews. We got voicemails. We got all of that. But Keith, let's get into it. Around the league. Uh, oh, we're going right into it. So we're gonna start off with news and narratives. Past couple episodes, we didn't do any news and narratives, but we got some good news and some narratives today. I'm gonna get right into it and play this from y'all. It's a soundbite from Jay Williams on ESPN on his show. Uh, Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Honestly, I don't really check for it, but today I was looking for it. And this is what was said. I'll tell you a story real quick. A couple years ago, we we're at a holiday party for KD's business, okay? And we're Every all there, everybody's years. hanging out. And I went on TV on Get Up that day and said, Giannis was destroying people in the league. And I said, you know what? When I think about Giannis, it's like AD and Kevin Durant had a baby to a degree. Size, length. I'm not saying skill set. I'm just saying the way he played, right? Gave the breakdown. Kevin Durant comes up to me at the club and says, yo, don't you ever compare me to Giannis again. Don't you ever do that. I was like, Kev, what are you talking about? Calm down. First off, I'm talking about scenarios like stylistically, the way you guys play a little bit, size, length. He's like, nah, don't ever compare that dude to me. Don't do it. I felt that in his voice at that moment that when this matchup came up, I'm like, oh, this is a proven moment opportunity for Kevin to show everybody he's not on the same page with me. <laughs> okay, where do we start? I, this is where I would like to start. Uh, because, man, there's degrees of separation between myself and a few people involved here. A uh, friend of mine knows Jay Will very closely, texts me about this. And I'm just trying to think about this situation, right? If you're at a holiday party for Kevin Durant's company, I'm assuming it's 35 Ventures or the boardroom, which are one and the same. But do you think Kevin Durant is at his holiday party mad like that? Do you think he's really coming through like, don't you ever compare me? Okay, now it's it's a he said, she said type of thing. But for me, as a grown ass man, for me, as someone in the industry, any conversations that are off record should stay off the record. Any conversations that happened years ago, almost two years ago or over two years ago, I don't know, should not be used on national television, ESPN for any reason. You could have potentially spun that another way instead of trying to tell a story and then verbatim give us a quote, which I'm I'm washed myself. I, I know Jay Will is washed. I guarantee you his memory of how that went down couldn't have been 100% intact. If it's a holiday party, there are probably drinks involved. So when I saw that this morning and I saw KD come out and he called cap, 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 big cap. He said, this is a fucking lie. Jay Williams can never speak for me ever. And I was pumped, yo. I love that KD uses social media the way he does and defends himself. And even if you don't believe KD, even if you think this is something that KD said, it was off the record. It was two years ago. And Jay Will, you going out sad, bro. This ain't the first time. Jay Will also got got by a fake ESPN meme that someone made with a quote from KD. And it wasn't anything that KD said and like the same thing with Shannon Sharp and these guys and that's why KD came out today and said what he said Hudson did you catch this this morning or were you not beat for all this nonsense first thing at like 9 10 a.m so I saw the quote come out first and I it just had the you know the the inflammatory part don't ever compare me to him whatever all that and I was like did did someone because like I watched the post game no one asked him that Jay Will doesn't isn't on the media team I don't know how he knows that all that aside, you made all the great points about keeping privacy private and all of that stuff. Two years ago, you probably don't remember, right? Drinks were involved, whatever. Putting literally all of that aside, let's say that it is true. Let's say that my man at a holiday party hosted by Kevin Durant's company really got up in front of other human beings and said that Giannis was a combination of AD, which I see. I see part of it. And, and Kevin Durant. Have you watched Kevin Durant play basketball? I damn like, sure did last night. <laughs> I know Giannis did too. And I know Giannis does not have any of KD's game in his bag. What are you talking about? Giannis, uh, look, he's a good basketball. He's a very, he's a superstar. There, first off, there's levels to this on um, greatness. But also, 
That's just not how Giannis plays. Did you see the things KD was doing? KD, 90% of his three-pointers in this playoffs have been contested. He's made 50% of them. I don't even want to look and be disgusted at what Giannis's three-point rating is. I don't want to know what Giannis's mid-range percentages are because they're garbage, because they're not the same. And honestly, I don't even want to know what Giannis's interior field goal percentage is because KD probably hasn't beat there because KD is the best player in the league. There is no comparison to be made. There is no game in anyone's game. It's just clownish that you would, after that game that happened last night, would get on the television and go in front of the nation, national TV, and make that type of clownish comparison and admit to saying that to score some type of publicity points for your ESPN show is just sad and ridiculous. And he should receive every single bit of hate that he's getting for that clownish behavior. Bro, he doubled down on it. He went on get up and said the same shit. Like after you said it the one time and Katie flamed your ass, you should have just left it at that, bro. So Katie goes on Twitter and he says, man's will do anything to advance their careers in this media shit. Wanting to be accepted by an industry that will dispose of you whenever they please. Keep me out all that corny ass talk about who's better and legacy and all that dumb ass shit. I don't even talk like that. Think about what he's saying, right? KD is writing his own legacy. We are blessed to get to watch it. We are, we are witnesses, some might say. He doesn't want to be involved in these narratives and these talking heads and this back and forth. Right. Yes, it's a series against Giannis. But KD was going at Tatum, too, and locking up Tatum, too. It's whoever's in front of him he's going to go at. They have to create this whole narrative of, oh, it's personal between KD and Giannis. Well, we were on the podcast last time saying, no, it's personal between Harden and Giannis. And Harden ain't there. So KD is just handling his light work. Giannis can't check him. Giannis can't shoot like him. Giannis, like, I don't I don't know where it even comes out of a former NBA player analyst mouth to compare those two or talk about AD and, and KD having a baby. Nah, that's why you listen to Talking Nets. That's why you listen to the Fanalyst pod, because these analysts will say anything. They will literally say anything. That's what you decided to lead with, J. Will? Come on, Brody. That's what you decided to lead with after you saw Arguably, and my, I, I was telling people last night, that was the best playoff game we've ever seen from the Brooklyn Nets. Best playoff game ever at the Barclays Center. I wasn't even there, but I knew because I my that's my spot. Like, I know I could tell. <laughs> Everything I was seeing from there, I'm like, yo, Barclays Center is on tilt. Let's move on, man. Not too much time on that, but I know, I, I know this morning I'm like, I'm putting this in the notes. We're going to lead off with this. We're going to address it because we control the narratives around here. Now, there was another narrative floating around that has nothing to do with basketball. I never even heard of this chick. Are y'all familiar with Lana Rhodes? The chick that came out this week and said she went on a date with a Brooklyn Nets player and he brought a side chick in. He brought a second date. Now, that's gangster. Like, I, I never even heard of anything like that. Showing up to a date and having a backup date, that's just you know, being smart. Hey, if this doesn't go the way I want it to go, we going to go. I got I got another one locked in. Maybe it was a blind date. Maybe it was, I don't know. There was speculation about all this. Hudson, you more in the dating lane. I'm about to get married. I don't know anything about this going on dates and, and having side chicks. I don't, that's not me. I'm, I'm about to be a, a humble, wholesome family man. What were you thinking when you saw Lana Rose? Is she a porn star, a former film star? Like, what were you thinking when you saw that one of the Nets, which we'll get to, showed up to the date with a second chick, like a a, a double date, but uh, only one dude and two chicks? <laughs> I mean, first off, uh, legally, no, I have never heard of her, never seen mention of her, no idea. Uh, off the record, though, this is what she's been doing. She's been going around the podcast circuit. She's been on about like 16 different like podcasts. She was on Dave Portnoy's podcast. She has her own podcast. And first off, I feel like she's just trying to stir the pot. I feel like she just knows that, you know, this is a good story. This will this will get the people going, which it did, which it did. It's a it's definitely a fun, a fun name to associate with a Brooklyn Nets player. 
But at the same time, and we'll get to, I know Keith wanted, Keith, Keith didn't want to drop out who it probably is, but I think everyone's seen the story. <laughs> Look, it, it's, that's who he is, man. It's just, you just gotta have, gotta have your plans ready for the night. And if you are, I mean, any member of the Nets world, but if you are number seven, the slim one, if that's you, I mean, shoot, like you can, that's just what you can do. That's just what you, what you are allowed to do, especially if it's Lana Rhodes. And especially if she's just out there, like to get a story, it sounds like. So honestly, good on whoever it was, Kevin Durant, whoever it was, he's a Libra, the only Libra on the team, whoever it was, good on you. And Lana Rhodes, enjoy your publicity because uh, I think that's what you wanted and you got it. Yeah, well done. I laughed at it. We didn't post it because I knew we were going to talk about it on the pod. Maybe we'll clip this up and post it. But yeah, that's funny, man. I just, I like to envision KD doing whatever he wants in real life, the same way he does whatever he wants on the court. God level. That that dude is, is ridiculous. I just, you know, sometimes I dream that he is me. No, I'm just kidding. I said I'm going to be a family man. I'm going to get married. That's why, that's why the first, I saw someone throw Kyrie out there. I'm like, nah, Kyrie's engaged. He got a whole kid. Like, don't put Kyrie's name in that. We support Kyrie. I had to dead that with somebody I was talking to. But, yeah, let's move on. Obviously, I segued from the J. Will stuff to the Lana Road stuff because I knew there was only one option there for who that could have been. But let's get back into this series, the Buck series. The NBA has asked the Brooklyn Nets, BSE Global, the Barclays Center, to remove the stopwatch on the drum, the Jumbotron. And, and I'm tight because I had tickets to these first two games and I couldn't get there. I wish I could have seen it with my own eyes. And I wish I could have been with the Brooklyn Brigade who was counting down and keeping Giannis honest at the free throw line but the Nets have been told to take down the Jumbotron by the NBA's request Adam Silver's probably like you can't do that to our MVP it's embarrassing he's already getting embarrassed enough he's not really good at shooting free throws he needs at least 12 seconds Mr. Whammy shout out to Mr. Whammy because I just need a reason to shout out to Mr. Whammy if you don't respect Mr. Whammy like somebody says something wild out of pocket about Mr. Whammy it was actually like one of them uh, X fans said something like, oh, Spike Lee will kick his ass. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Don't even disrespect our agency like that. That's our super fan. That's our guy. And he's got power in there. Hudson, what did Mr. Whammy and Mrs. Whammy do last night that affected Giannis and had Giannis seeing Mr. Whammy in his nightmares? Giannis was missing free throws, obviously, but he was missing more than normal. Oh, my goodness. Giannis went up there. First off, no free throws made in the first game. When he saw the coming at him, when he saw the fingers coming from Mr. Whammy, he forced all those Giannis misses. I think Giannis might have made one or two free throws the entire game. And he had a, a bunch of options. That's just, it's just the Mr. Whammy magic. It's just what he does. And a little behind the scenes content. I was, I was putting out a clip. I wanted to put out a clip of Mr. Whammy because they cut to him on the broadcast, you know, before Giannis um, eventually did miss a free throw. And I was going to send out the whole clip of Mr. Whammy getting shown and then Giannis missing the free throw. And by the end of it, it was like 25 seconds long because Giannis was taking an hour and a half on his free throw. And I was like, I can't post. I can't. You're not, no one's going to get the joke. No one's going to watch that to the end. It's just too long. It's just too, too, too long. But look, whatever the Nets are doing, whether it's on the Jumbotron or coming from the block, coming from the brigade, who were so loud and so amazing and did not stop the countdowns just because the Nets took it off the Jumbotron. It's working and it's all working. And Barclays Center is the place to be in TNT. They've been known to, to, to tune down the crowd noise a little bit so we can hear the, uh, the, uh, you know, the Alzheimer's infused musings of Marv Albert, you know, talking about our Brooklyn Nets, but we could hear it on the TV and it was just rocking in there and all the videos we got and everything we saw was huge and it's making a difference. We really are the six man. We're dispelling another narrative, the whole no Nets fans narrative, which is another one that X fans and other people have resorted to talking about. It's just all working. It's all going in the right direction. And a lot of that, you know, not the play on the court, but what certainly what the other team is doing and what they're feeling, it comes down to the fans and 
all the Nets fans that were there. I know we got some in the chat. I know Keith wants to talk about how he should have been there for two games, but couldn't be. You made that difference. That was huge. Man, I appreciated it. But before we move on to that, I have one question for you, Hudson. Um, one free throw to save your life. Who's taking it? Giannis or Ben Simmons? I mean, look, first off, uh, you're making your funeral preparations regardless at that point, just because that's 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 not not a, not too good of a shot on that. I, I guess I'm going Giannis because at least I got time to say my goodbyes. <laughs> right. Because he's taking he's taking those 10 seconds. He's taking those 10 seconds. But man, I, it's, <laughs> that's a dangerous proposition. Maybe who knows? But maybe the Hawks will win. Maybe we won't have to watch Ben Simmons stick it up, stick it up at the free throw line when the Nets move on to the next round. Great segue, because we were going around the association and we weren't doing news and narratives, but it's playoffs. We got to go around the association. There's less teams playing. Hudson and I have been ready for this where there's less teams and less teams. And then it's just going to be the Nets and some other team in the West. Obviously, the Nets are up 2-0 in their series against the Bucks, handling business in Barclays Center. We ain't lost a game in Brooklyn. We're 5-0 and in Brooklyn. The Suns lead the Nuggets 1-0. I watched that last night. Chris Paul did what he had to do late. Book laying on his back on the floor. Them Suns fans were turned up like the Barclays Center was turned up. You love to see it. Here's a story. When I got on the plane, there was a lady on the plane who was the stewardess. She had a pin. As I'm flying out, she's got a pin. I don't even notice her pin, but I have a Brooklyn Nets mask on, which I don't even remember that I'm wearing. And before I got on the plane, I was in the like hallway that connects and I was sending a voice uh, note to one of my boys, one of the bleacher creatures about the Suns because they were saying they're not going to be able to keep this Suns team together. Uh, they're not going to pay Chris Paul the max, eight in the max, Mikael Bridges, something like that. And I'm like, well, if these guys make a run to the finals, they're going to try and keep that team together. And I said, right now, I'm thinking I want Suns Nets finals. If you listen to talking Nets, when we played the Suns, I gave you a whole bunch of narratives and storylines and reasons that it should be Nets Suns finals. You guys know the crossover, Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marks, uh, Blake Griffin used to date Devin Booker's girl. But I step on the plane and I know this lady couldn't hear me in the hallway because she's deep into the plane. And she says, are you dreaming of a Suns Nets finals? I said, did you hear you hear my conversation I had? I just sent a voice note to the chat about that. She's like, no, I just saw your mask. And I'm like, oh. And then I see her pin. She's got a Suns pin. She's like, I'm a Suns fan. Guess who was playing that night? Suns Lakers. I said, hell yeah, close them out. And they did just that. Universe never unconnects. Around the association, the Hawks beat the Sixers game one. I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, there you go. I'm, we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves, but what were you thinking about Trey Young and the they they the Hawks had complete control of that game, and the Sixers they're in trouble. And Embiid is hurt, and they don't have it. I don't know. What are you thinking about the Hawks, Hudson? I just want to hear your opinion. Yeah, I mean, I I like what they're doing. I love the combination they have in the backcourt with Trey Young and Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter had a big game. Always going to have a soft spot for Kevin Herter. He's from the same hometown. Went to my favorite college basketball school. Love to see red it. Velvet? They, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The red, the red Mamba is what we used to call him in Maryland. I didn't know but, that. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Red Mamba. That was his nickname. But uh, red Mamba. no, I love what they have going on. They've got great stuff going in the pick and roll game, and they're well coached. They're well drilled. I like what they're doing, and they're giving the Sixers problems. And mm -hmm. they're giving them big problems. Right now, if I'm watching this game tonight, and I will be after we record this, I'm expecting a win from the Hawks. Honestly, I think they're going to take control of this series because I just don't like what I'm seeing from the 76ers. It's just, I don't know, they, they, they got the injury. I don't love Ben Simmons' game. Their role players aren't showing up the way they were in the regular season. I don't know. They, they, maybe they you know, get the gentleman sweep. They prove me wrong. But right now, the Hawks look really good, and the Sixers don't look like they have that same level of confidence that they're going to need to be able to really dispatch with this Hawks team that just got through a great, fun series against the Knicks where they shut them out in you know a bunch of games except for that one. 
and they just brought all that momentum into game one and got a win. So, you know, a lot of people say playoff series don't start until the road team wins. Road team won game one. Let's yeah. see what happens next. Maybe they flip it. Maybe they they pull a Mavericks and they, uh, you know, they, they take both home games for the 76ers. But I'm liking what I'm seeing from them. And if I'm the Nets and I'm looking towards the next round, look, they're going to be a threat. They're going to pose a threat. They're, they're a good team. They can shoot. If anyone can score with the Nets, I think it's that team. So looking forward, if they can pull this one out, they're going to be a fun challenge for the Nets. Still Nets in four, but a, but a funner challenge than we have right now with the Bucks. I I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. But there's a curse out there, right? And the fans created this curse. The Celtics fans chanted, we want Brooklyn. Poof. They had the Van Moose disappear. Those Knicks fans were outside Madison Square Garden after they won one playoff game chanting, we want Brooklyn. Adios. Goodbye. That's all she wrote for your season. And I'm pretty sure after the Sixers beat the Wizards, I heard some chants from their fans saying, we want Brooklyn, the one seed. And you're worried about Brooklyn. Worry about who's in front of you, the Hawks. Can't wait to watch that game tonight. Nets fans, you should watch every playoff game. I've been telling you all that the whole time. Check it out. And last but not least, the Jazz and the Clippers will play tonight and open up their series. What a hell of a series that was with Luka and them. I mean, went seven, and I knew once they got it back to the Staples Center and the Lakers were out, I'm like, Kawhi, they're going to close them out. That's done. So, all right. Now it is time to talk about our games, game one, Saturday night, I am at the wedding, literally watching the game on my phone, and the first thing I see is James Harden come down, and I didn't have the sound on, but the next thing I saw was him walk into the locker room. I tweet, why is James Harden walking into the locker room? I got some quick answers from people. I literally turned my phone off. And I decided to be present with my friends, family, my girl, people at the wedding, even though inside I was freaking out. I was like, this is my worst nightmare being realized. This is what a hater wants. This is what the whole world wants to see. I pray for health. And as soon as the game starts, we lose James Harden, who I said is going to be the key to the series. I can't believe my eyes. I turned my phone off. Hudson rocked on Twitter. And I'm going to pass it to Hudson and tell you what he was feeling in the moment and then what he saw from the Brooklyn Nets who decided, wait, 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 wait. Uh, don't panic. Don't panic. We're just getting started, baby. Don't panic. Hudson, what were you thinking behind the controls of Talking Nets Twitter when Harden goes down and the internet explodes? I was feeling what everyone else was feeling. Demoralized. Tragic. It was just absolutely crushing. Just a minute into the game. The first his first layup attempt, he comes up pulling holding the same hamstring that he hurt before, takes himself right off the court, and you know James Harden is not one to take himself out of games. It crushed me. And I was worried that it was gonna crush the Nets because after, you know, I, I finished being sad for myself and then and you know, being sad that maybe the Nets don't have the same future we thought that they had. I was worried. Are the Nets not going to respond well? Are they going to feel sorry for themselves? Are they going to feel bad that they lost one of their stars, their superstars, their biggest leader, one of the biggest facilitators on this team that brings everyone up around him? And they weren't. They stepped up. The Nets stepped all the way up. The Nets brought great energy. And in that immediate aftermath of him going down, the Nets played great basketball and they stuck with it. Their whole game plan got thrown out the window but in comes the bench, in comes everybody else, 7, 11, and the rest of the crew got it done. Joe Harris hit threes. Everybody was hitting their shots, and it was huge. And it was great to see that even though they had that huge loss, they weren't going to go down without a fight. And they fought, and they finished that first quarter well, and then they brought that energy through the rest of the game. But I was just feeling I – felt, I felt sad, but then I felt great because – the Nets aren't done. The Nets are not going to go quietly into that good night. And obviously, looking back, we know how they finished that game and then the next game. But those initial moments, I think, were crucial. And it was just really great to see the Nets react so well 
to what was really just a complete disaster to start game one. Bro, when James went down, I didn't know what to do, what was going to happen, but people started giving me updates. And then one Mike James Harden emerged. And I was like, what a wild reality we live in that Mike James, we didn't even know if he was going to be with this team for the playoffs. He was in Russia two, three months ago. What a wild reality that we're going to get 30 minutes from Mike James in game one. I'm just like, I can't believe it. I like it's Nets level hits different now because the Nets just raised their level. Guys were ready. How about Blake Griffin, dude? When I checked the box score, I'm like, people were talking about Blake Griffin not shooting threes. He shot nine threes. He made four of them. Blake's game, man, Blake has activated Brooklyn Blake. I have nothing else to call him besides Brooklyn Blake because this is the version of himself that he he wasn't doing this in Detroit. He's created another version of himself, dunking the basketball, shooting the basketball, obviously playing defense, which you got to speak on the defensive impact he makes. He's starting. Man, it, did it, it didn't hurt this team losing Harden. They regrouped. Now, that is something that I guess because the Nets have dealt with this all year, they don't really panic. Oh, KD's out. That's fine. Next man up. Next man up, Nets. That's definitely a title of one of our podcasts from months ago. Oh, Harden's hamstring is hurt. He's going to miss a lot of time. Oh, well, we got KD. We got Kyrie. We're fine. Oh, Kyrie's on a leave. Kyrie's got to handle some personal business. Not a problem. Somebody else will rise. I, I just love this team. And now you're starting to really see some of the role players. Landry Shamit. Nick Claxton, Bruce Brown. And what do we say on this podcast? The world will get to know them through this playoffs run. Yes, it's the big three. Yes, it's scary hours, right? Scary hours is James Harden's term. And the scariest of hours we saw was in game two. Let's move on and talk about game two. Now, it crushed me, bro. I am in Wisconsin. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Saturday night, I have VIP tickets. Uh, seats 19 and 20 in VIP section 25. I wouldn't even make that up. I almost wanted to throw up. I'm like, why am I in Wisconsin? I was in Wisconsin for my boy. He was getting married. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. But then I wake up the next day and I go to the Pfizer forum. And I think I told y'all on this podcast, I was going to go over there and disrespect that spot. I was going to leave some talking Nets energy there. And I came through with the talking Nets sticker and my boy was filming. And I just said, boom. Let's put that talking that sticker right on the Bucks nose and take a video. That video was great. I did another video pointing at their sign. It says history in the making. And I talked to some Bucks fans at the wedding and some people out there that were confident. Shout out to the Milwaukee radio station, the game 97.3. I have to shout them out because that Saturday I'm driving from Chicago to Milwaukee. They reach out to talking nets on Twitter. Hudson's like, yo, they want somebody to come on and talk about the Nets. And I'm respectful. So I go on. I literally get to my hotel at 1050. And I go on the air with them at 11. And I don't disrespect them. I was definitely on some Nets world talking Nets energy. But I was like, you know, maybe if the Bucks come out and punch us in the mouth in the first game, this series can go seven. But honestly, I think it's going to be Nets and six, maybe even five. And from the looks of it, last night in game two, I think this is Nets in five, maybe even a sweep. If it ain't a sweep, it's a gentleman sweep. I, I fly back from Chicago yesterday, and there's thunderstorms. The, the, the flight out was only 90 minutes. The flight back was three and a half hours because they had to dodge all of the storms. I had tickets last night, good tickets last night. Couldn't go. And I'm like, hey, I'm not meant to be there. There's something bigger in the universe than me. I've been to a couple games. I'm not meant to be there. And I didn't want to show up to the game at halftime. I didn't want to show up to the game and like miss something great. I'm glad I watched the whole game at home on TV. I got to see the TNT broadcast that people were telling me about like, oh, the, the fans were quiet on the TNT broadcast. I think they fixed their mics. The Barclays Center was on tilt. It was cracking in there from start to finish. That game two was over in the first quarter. I think Katie and Kyrie outscored the Bucs in the first quarter. They had nothing for us. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself and say we're going to sweep them or it's going to be a gentleman sweep because it's going to be different energy in the Pfizer Forum. They're going to have their fans. That's where Giannis 
eats. That's where the MVP is going to be right back at home, comfortable. Who knows? Maybe their big three can turn it on. But I want to send a shout out to all the Barclays Center fans, all the Brooklyn Nets fans, all the New Jersey Nets fans, the, the Brooklyn Brigade, the block, everybody that was in there yelling, Brooklyn, let's go Nets, let's go Nets. I put out a tweet before I left Chicago yesterday. I said, fans, show up early, be loud. I thought I was going to go to the game. It was a picture of the block. I'm in that picture. I'm like, like they're going to need us tonight. Game two, they're going to need our energy tonight. They're going to feed off our energy tonight. And people brought it. I was able to do a ticket giveaway and gift my tickets to two guys. And I saw they had a great time. And I got the result that I wanted at the end of the day. Hudson, what are you thinking about the Brooklyn Nets fans that they said don't exist, but that was a goddamn lie. I told you all that. And the energy in the Barclays Center and how we came out and played last night, led by KD, who knew, hey, this is my time, right? There was a little bit of time on Talking Nets where we said, this is Harden's team. Harden is the leader of this team. Mm -mm. Shifted right back. KD, Slim Reaper is activated. It's easy money. KD led all scorers on the Nets and put some highlight reel stuff like the crossover, the, the reverse lay, the threes. Ridiculous. Hudson, take the floor for however long you want and tell me about your thoughts in game two. I mean, look, the Nets came out to kill. They came out ready to annihilate the Bucks, And that started with 7-Eleven, with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They came out just ready to absolutely dice the Bucks, And that's exactly what they did. They were taking turns embarrassing Giannis in particular. Giannis was getting switched on to Kyrie. They were hunting the Giannis switch for Kyrie so that he could blow by him, so that he could hit him with the dribble moves and take the three. It was unstoppable. You talked about the first quarter KD crossover that he had on the right side, on the right elbow, and then he took that midi shot. Beautiful. <laughs> Giannis embarrassed. Kyrie takes a three, takes a little step back three to start off his scoring, hits it. Giannis embarrassed. And then Kyrie on the break, coming down the court, hits Giannis with the yoink, step back, transition, three, bottom, easy, all day. Giannis needed a map. It was it was beautiful to see. It was just, it was wonderful to see. And it starts at the top, right? Leadership starts at the top. So when you see your leader just getting thrashed, trounced, confused, lost, bullied by the Nets leaders, that is a trickle-down effect on the rest of the team. And we saw that. Middleton's shot still wasn't there. Drew was a non-factor. Their bench was a non-factor. P.J. Tucker, I said it on the intro, two points, three different pairs of shoes for the game. He outshooed himself. More shoes than points. Let me say it again. More pairs of shoes than points contributed to this game. And that's just the way it was the whole game, right? The first game, we saw some scary hours at the beginning. And then in the third quarter, the Nets pulled away. This game, wire-to-wire -wire victory, but not just a wire-to-wire -wire victory, a wire-to-wire -wire domination, a wire-to-wire -wire annihilation. It was just different. We were up close to 30 points going into half. I think it was 24. And then we took that 30-point lead. And then the fourth quarter, oh, my man, we had the Brooklyn Bubble Nets. Bubble Nets versus the world. T. Himothe, Luawu, Cabarro, and Reggie Perry, talking Nets alum, diced him up to put the Nets up 50 points. Oh my goodness. It was an embarrassment. It was an annihilation. And the Bucs didn't even know how to act. They had, you know, rookies that don't get playing time at the end of that game trying to start fights with Tyler Johnson, who you know from when Kyrie got the bottle thrown at his head, is absolutely willing to take anyone's smoke and give it right back to you. It, it was just wonderful. It was magnificent. And I'm just going to echo what I said on Twitter during this game. Nets fans, everyone in the chat, everyone listening, everyone that follows us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. You deserve this. You earned this. We were fans when no one cared about the Brooklyn Nets, when we had one national TV game a season, when we didn't think that anybody was going to their games. They couldn't give away tickets to games. We had 12 and 70. We had Billy King. We had that famous summer league photo 
where we had all the people who, if you can't name, you're not a book of a Nets fan from the olden days. The Dwight Mayor. The Dwight Mayor. <laughs> the Dwight Mayor. We had everything. We had thinking that Jay-Z was going to bring LeBron to the Nets. We had everything. We put in the long hours. And now here we are. We're on top. That's what all of that has led up to. That's what everything that Sean Marks has done has led up to. That's everything that Josiah has done. This is what it's led up to. And now you should feel good about enjoying it. I don't care if Knicks fans are going on, you know, New York talk radio and saying the NBA needs to step in and stop the Brooklyn Nets. They're too good. And it's not fair to the rest of the league. It's no fun. If that is what people are saying, then you did it right. You built it right. We built it with no draft picks. We built it with no money. We built it with an aging roster, with nobody that you could even name. And here we are at the top of the league. And we deserve to be here. And we deserve all the admiration. We deserve all the glory we're going to get and are going to keep getting for the rest of these playoffs. So Nets fans, just enjoy it. We built this with culture. We built this with grit. We built this with... Just an attractive team, right? The hip hop influence, the the Biggie jerseys, that D'Angelo Russell year. That's the year that inspired talk talking nets. If you see our graphic now, we got the Basquiat. Yeah, that's more culture. That's the Basquiat Brooklyn legend that we've embraced. Only the Nets can pull off a city edition jersey that features a rapper and a and a, a artist, a painter, right? Shout out to Kenny Atkinson. Kenny Atkinson took a bunch of guys that nobody wanted and figured out how to win, figured out how to get into the playoffs. Even give Lionel Holland some love, not too much, but some love. Like it, it took a while to get here, man. And people are going to always discredit you and always try and devalue your success because they're lame, because they're whack. I, I can speak to that personally on my own. <laughs> like They're just going to look at you win and try and say every reason, reason why you shouldn't be getting the credit, why you shouldn't be what you are. And I think the, the world is seeing now this is a Nets world. I love this game. I saw someone in the chat mention Tyler Johnson getting into it with uh, Mama D. Diaki. I, didn't, like, I, can't even know how to, I don't even know how to say his name. I, I just called him a Wesley Snipes, Dennis Rodman, Cisco-looking ass boy. Like, came in the game for five minutes and stiff-armed Tyler Johnson. It's like, bro, you look so lame. Your whole team is lame. They don't even have your back. Like, Reggie Perry could have handled you, but we're not even on that time. And another thing that I saw on Twitter that I like, people saying how classy us Nets fans are. You don't hear us saying F Giannis. You don't hear us saying F anybody. If anything, we're clever with our cheers and our chants. And we keep it classy in Brooklyn because we know we're up here. We know we're at the top. We know we're the best. What else from this game? Oh, on the anniversary, when we're talking about Nets history, Drazen, Petrovic, we're... We're looking at the anniversary. I, I don't know. I think he passed in 93. I don't know the math, the, the, the math um, 18 years ago. Man, we're, we're looking at his anniversary. That's a Nets legend. They brought back the 91 jerseys this year. His energy was in there. They said Kyrie shot 50% from, from three. We were burying threes, making it rain in there. I posted the picture of the homies that came in there with an umbrella. Nets fans, that's just clever, right? Even if it rained that day, you could put your umbrella down. Mans is indoors, kept his umbrella up. <laughs> like, I love that because it was wet in there. They made it rain. And I think there were some other records set. I saw that, you know, 39 points was the, uh, the 39 point win was the largest um, franchise record for largest margin of victory in a playoff game. I said that was the best. Brooklyn Nets, Barkley Center playoff game we've ever seen. I did not see it live. I wasn't meant to be there, but I love it because all I'm about is the results. Whether I get to go or not, I put somebody in those seats. What else from this game? Um, 21 threes. I think that's what they compared when they talked about Drazen. I think we hit 21 threes in this game. Had our, our way, like our entire Shot way. Shot 50% from three as well. Ridiculous. That's Drazen energy in there. That's Drazen energy in there. And, you know, Tyler Johnson, we got your back. Mr. Whammy, we got your back. Shout out everybody. Doug Barrick, that was in there giving us some stuff to post. Man, I'm just, I'm so proud of Nets fans. I'm so proud to go to another state and rep the Nets this hard, especially as a Yankee fan right now. The Yankees are, 
I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm mentioning them on this podcast. Y'all know I'm a Yankee fan, but last time I was in the Barkley Center, I was like, thank God I have the Nets and talking Nets right now because the Yankees are embarrassing. And we're in a, a, a different universe, man. There's been a shift in the universe. Nets world, baby. Um, anything else from this game, Hudson? Kyrie's no look pass to KD in game one. I have in my notes. I wanted to talk about that. It's just swagging uh, KD's crossover of Giannis and then the reverse lay. And you talked about KD All shooting. too much. Bro, nobody can contest him up there. Nobody is getting up there. to Like, it's, it's unbelievable. Harden is on this team. Uncle Jeff is on this team. We're fine without him. It's crazy. It's a we're crazy We're out. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The Nets as a team – or in the 40-50 or 50-40-90 club, however you want to say it. Kevin Durant is shooting 55-50-91. It is ridiculous. Oh, no, nah, hold the on. Nets, the Nets are just on a different level. They're just doing the most, and they're doing it like nobody else has ever done it before. And the last thing I would say I'd like to highlight on the game, aside from the Blake Griffin dunk on Giannis, when that. we knew the game was over, <laughs> over. When we knew the game was over, over, when he put it over Giannis, oh my goodness, was the fact that Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving immediately after the game, where what did they do? They went right to their families and they hugged their families. KD hugged the real MVP. Kyrie hugged everyone who he was with. I believe actually uh, someone for uh, City Attorney in New York, uh, a candidate, he was uh, a guest of his there as well. He was uh, he was talking with. And just to see that, to see the family energy is just, it's great. It's amazing. And it just, it just makes me happy. And then I got sad because I had to get brought all the way down when that dumbass ESP or TNT courtside reporter went up and asked Katie, did you think you would be the same after the injury? And Katie goes, what, what the, f the fuck kind of a question is that? Yeah, of course I did. Like, I, I don't get, like, what are these reporters on that they want to ask these questions? And, like, we know a lot of Nets beat reporters. They'd never ask questions like this. No, they would never. It's they, the national reporters looking for gotcha takes who don't have any relationship with these players that just want to get a headline and want to get their name in the paper so bad that they ask these dumbass questions and force Katie to tell you to shut up. And, like, after game one when he said, <laughs> shut up, Stefan, when Stefan Bondi asked him a dumbass question, like, he said, I wouldn't tell you. I would, love to speak on that. I, would love, I would love to speak on the question that Katie, uh, but first Tahani Abushi NYC. I'm pretty sure that's her name. I'm just reading it off Twitter. Um, Kyrie went right to her after the game. It just shows you the type of time Kyrie's on now back to KD. I said this, right? <laughs> they act like KD died in the finals in 2019. They act like, like his soul left his body and there was 0% chance that he was going to come back to life. What kind of question is that, bro? We're here in Brooklyn with the Nets. Ask KD a question about the Brooklyn Nets. Ask KD a question about this run he's having as a net. Two years was a long time, and this world changed a, a lot in the last two years. Why are y'all still going back to ask about an Achilles injury in game five of the Warriors-Raptors finals? Like, it's so goofy, bro. And yes, KD is extremely confident in himself in the doctors, in the trainers, in the people that he rehab with. If I don't know if he's religious. I'm sure he's got faith in God. What did you mean by that question? Of course he thought he was going to come back and kill. He still has a lot to prove. He's 32. It'd be one thing if this happened to this man and he was older than LeBron. He's got a lot more career left ahead of him. And that was just the second game of the second series. Like, I don't know. I thought that was a goofy question. I'm glad Katie checked him. Like, of course. Like, I... I've achieved this much. I plan to achieve more. My, I popped my Achilles. I didn't die. And yeah, ask me a question about this team and this journey, the Brooklyn Nets and the Nets franchise and Kevin Durant as a net. Let's stop talking about Kevin Durant and the Warriors. Let's stop talking about the finals and the Achilles from two years ago. Like we're erasing all of that now. Anyway, I think that's all we've got from the games. We've got a ton of voicemails. This is going to be a long episode. We're going to run through the voicemails. But first, upcoming playoff schedule. The next game will be Thursday, June 10th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. That's the first game at the Pfizer Forum. I already went and disrespected that place, so we're good over there. Um, the second game will be Sunday, game four, 
at 3 p.m. on ABC. We'll see what happens. Like I said, can't get too comfortable. Can't count the uh, Bucks out. This is a team that we all gave hella respect. I gave them respect on Milwaukee radio. I gave them respect in the Bucks preview. I said I wanted it to go seven because I knew there was a chance that I missed game one and game two. I'm like, uh, if it goes seven, I'll get to go to game five and game seven. But the way that the Nets are rolling, the way KD is locked in, he's scoring 32 a game. Kyrie is following up, shooting very well. Nobody can check him. They can't guard anybody on this team. They told they told us they told us that we couldn't guard anybody. They told us that we didn't play defense. They they said to us, "Who's going to stop Giannis himself?" So <laughs> those games are coming up. I can't wait to watch them. I'll figure out some kind of live stream. I'll figure out some kind of setting or scenario, um, and we'll go through these voicemails quickly as we possibly can. I mean. I, I tried to get everyone's voicemail, but honestly, when we send out, like our Twitter is getting bigger now. If we send out uh, a tweet saying, hit the voicemail, that's 20 voicemails coming through. I'm like, that's cool and all, but we can't play them all. <laughs> Brooklyn. Beautiful. Love it. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. That's all. What's going on, bros? It's Rich, a.k.a. Brooklyn County on Twitter, man. This game right here, game two, Nets, Bucks. All I got to say is I, I want to know where all the, oh, the Nets don't play defense people at. I want to know where uh, all the, oh, y'all is going to average 50 against us people at, man, because. I'm not seeing it so far. I don't want to be too hyped, but I'm just saying that I'm, I'm not seeing all this uh, terrible Nets defense everybody was talking about. Nick Wright was talking trash in um, Barkley's game one, got on his little show, was talking trash again. I, I, I can't wait to hear what him and people like him have to say tomorrow, man. I, I, I just can't wait to hear it. But it was a great win tonight. Everybody was in tune. Everybody was cooking. The defense was cooking. Everybody was doing well, man. man. Shout out Nets Nation. Shout out Talking Nets, man. Yo, I, I would like to shout out Coach Nash, Coach Dan Tony, Coach Jacques Vaughn, the Brooklyn Nets organization for these rotations and the scheme and the time that they took to watch film and figure out how to attack Giannis and them after Giannis and them had a week off, swept the heat, and everybody were like, oh, they swept the heat, the defending Eastern Conference champs. And what did I tell y'all? I said, that shit's got nothing to do with us. It's got nothing to do with us. Hudson? Like, oh, man, they swept the heat. It's not the bubble anymore. It's not the past. This is the future. This is the Nets world. It's different. We're different. That's all. I mean, look, it's just, that's the way it is. Yo, what's up, talking Nets? This is Yusuf here, at Party of Zero on Twitter, calling from Albany, New York. Shout out to Hudson. Uh, so I actually made the trek down for game one. Best game I've ever been to, and I've been to a handful of games in Barclays Center. Don't listen to anyone that tried to tell you that the crowd was not lit. That crowd was wild. And towards the end of the game, I told my friend, I was like, I sniff it. I sniff a sweep, and I sniff the ring coming to Brooklyn. Next world, let's go. Next world, baby. He knows. He knows. Shout out to the 518. If anyone wants to watch the Brooklyn Nets in Albany, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, we got to do a uh, a watch party in Albany somewhere. You can't even get in the bar, though, bro. You can't even have a watch party at the bar. <laughs> 518. But, yeah, man, I, I am a little sad that I didn't get to experience that with my fellow Nets fans and being there yelling Brooklyn, but I already knew what time it was. I, I, I knew it was going to be lit in there. Let's go, Max and Bulls. Just like the Boston series. You got a good nothing lead in the series. So, um, and funny enough, we've won five um, playoff games to the row at home, and that's insane. Um, I, I'm just in a disbelief. Hopefully, um, let's not get too complacent. 
let's came up with a same game plan and hopefully we'll take it to them in game three and four. Let's go next. <laughs> let's go nuts. Let's not be complacent. Let's go in and finish this thing. Take these games seriously because these guys are NBA players. These guys are MVPs. These guys are all stars. They are going to want to get a win on their home floor. Next voicemail. Yo, Keith Tustin, what's up, guys? Um, it's Robbie here again. Um, super pumped about this game, and I think the one big takeaway is that Kevin Durant is the best basketball player in the world. Um, quite obvious, the great performance tonight. Um, you know, when we're talking about James Harden, um, I'm hearing rumblings on Twitter and stuff that if the Nets go up, you know, three hours, three one in the series, that even if he's technically able to play, that we still rest him anyway and kind of look forward towards the last couple of series. Um, personally. That sketches me out a lot. And, you know, as a Nets fan who's lived with a lot of gloom and doom, the fact of not trying to go 100% for every single game um, kind of scares me a bit. You know, I know about the re-injury with the hamstring and stuff like that. So I know it's a complicated issue. Um, yeah, so I love what we, love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Um, yeah, let's go Nets. Hudson, your thoughts on whether James Harden should re-enter this series with a hamstring injury? If the Nets are up 3-0 or 3-1, no, he should not. No, he should not. I, I disagree uh, with Robbie. Love you, Robbie. But uh, I disagree with you completely because this is a hamstring. These soft tissue injuries, they're no joke. James Harden is one more of these from being done for the year, out for the year, done for the season. No finals MVP for him because he's done. Like, it's serious stuff, right? And even if it doesn't seem like it, you know, it's not as, it's not as scary or as jarring as, you know, breaking your leg or, you know, getting like an ACL tear or something like that, this can hold them out for the rest of the year. So if the Nets are in that commanding 3-0, 3-1 lead, and we've seen what 7-11 can do so convincingly, but these games haven't even been close, like adding James Harden wouldn't even do anything. It, what are we going to be up 49 and then what, we're up 79? What? Like it's, it's not going to make that much of a difference, right? So if we can keep that energy, keep that momentum, there's no reason to put him in and risk that re-injury when we have games where we might need him more than we do now. And I'm usually not a proponent of playing for the future. And I usually like having the, you know, the possibility of ramp up time. But right now with James Harden, we know he's ramped up. We know who he is. We know he's ready to go. So I wouldn't risk it in a game that necessarily might not matter as much as games in the future. The whole plan is to win the whole thing. Hudson Nets fans have a ring around their profile pictures, right? How many links have we filled in in that ring? We're six way through. Ten more to go. Thank you. So, in my opinion, if we're handling business and we're still filling out that ring, nah, chill. If we can handle business without Harden, rest him up. The Nets have the best medical people in the world. They know what they're doing. And if we're good, don't stress it, baby. This is the playoffs now. It's not the regular season when we're like, ah, oh, where's Harden? We need him to ramp up. Nobody is questioning the Nets' chemistry anymore. Nobody is questioning whether the Nets will be able to gel anymore. Nobody is questioning whether the Nets will be able to compete at a high level anymore. It's the Nets level now. Good morning, Brooklyn! Javi, Javi Bang. Fellas, what a game. What a game. I thought the Nets don't play defense. What happened? You know, at the beginning of that game, you went to FanDuel. The Bucks were favored to win game two. Hmm. Anybody check that final score? Anyhow, Brooklyn! Brooklyn! <laughs> Yo, someone get him some tickets to go with the brigade. Get him in the block. That man can yell. Yeah, bro. I mean, I I, I want to wrangle up all the Nets fans with that energy like that for the rest of the run. We're not done. Another one. Brooklyn. Yo, I didn't expect that the Bucks would come out and shoot that horribly two games in a row, but I don't think it matters. KD's out there on a mission. Kyrie looks like he's doing things just to prove a point. When he pulls up for three on back to back possession, while the game's already in garbage time, and he just nails both of them and just looks at the sideline, he's trying to say something to people. 
Kyrie's putting the team on his back. Played phenomenally. This series is over in four. That's what I'm hoping anyways. And then it's on to the next. Let's go Nets. Okay, this guy called twice, so I'm going to play his next one. It's okay. He uh, he had two two good voicemails. It's fine. Let's go Nets. Go. I already called, but I had to say one more thing. The story of this season isn't just the story of a super team. People want to talk like, oh, just because they got Kyrie and Irving and James Harden, you know, they're bound to win, whatever. It's boring. Let me tell you what the story of this season is. It's the story of the role players. Blake Griffin, Uncle Jeff. Landry Shamit's out there doing his best Kyrie Irving impression. This is why Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are so great. It's because they've made successfully everyone around them better. You can't convince me other than that. Straight up, bro. Shamit was trying to do what Kyrie was doing. He hit back-to-back threes like Kyrie hit back-to-back threes last night. I'm like, they're going all the way off. <laughs> I don't know what got into these guys. Maybe they did see the odds. Maybe they did see people, well, oh, this is where the Bucks even the series without Harden. No, 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 no. All right, two more voicemails. We're almost through. Almost at the end of the pod. What's up, guys? It's Mike from Jersey. Uh, I was at the game last night. Place was rocking. They were not at the theater. Um, something I found pretty interesting. Uh, I was at game five of the Celtics series. Saw a lot of old school New Jersey Nets gear. Um, and then last night for game two against the Bucks, a lot more Brooklyn gear, um, which I think speaks to what you guys have been saying, you know, as, as, as this run continues as we win these games. Um, and certain other teams lose. Um, you know, maybe we have some more people uh, joining us in the Barclays Center. Um, hope to see everyone there for game five. If we get there, uh, no problem. If we don't, let's go Nets. I've got to speak on that, and maybe Hudson has something to add too. Yeah, I like this is exactly what I expected. We're the only ticket in town. I actually have been looking for a Basquiat jersey since we had the brand refresh. I'm like, I slept on those Basquiat jerseys when they first came out on Talking Nets. I, I told you I thought they looked janky, but then when I saw them on the players, I'm like, man, they're actually sweet with the court. I need one. Then we did the brand refresh, and I don't have anything with the Basquiat. So I went looking, and I'm online. And even in the Nets store in the Barclays Center, can't get one. They have been bought up. And the rest of the jerseys are disappearing too. Even the, the 1991 jerseys you can't get anymore. And our basic icon jerseys, the black and white, Either way, they're gone. They're flying off the racks. Yes, because bandwagon time is now. Scary hours are for playoffs. Now is the time when there's less and less teams and people are like, yo, the Nets are fun to watch. They're going to win it all and I want to be a part of it. And then the last part of that, we saw an image that Doug Barrett sent our way of someone in the stadium with a Knicks hat and an RJ Barrett hat. When I was at game two of the last series, I saw a girl with a Patrick Ewing jersey on and i dead ass said to her next time leave the nick stuff at home like don't come here with that goofy shit you can wear anything else there's gonna be knicks fans in our arena to see this happen they're probably never gonna get to see this happen for themselves and that's okay this is new york right it's the main stage like Kyrie was talking about everybody is gonna be in brooklyn i encourage y'all to come early i encourage y'all to be loud if i'm in the stadium you will see me running around i've got five nets jerseys I've got a J Kid. I've got a Vince Carter. I got a KD statement jersey. And then I got a, a two Kyrie's, the black icon Kyrie, and then the 1991 throwback um, Kyrie. So I- I'm good with the jerseys I got, but I pay attention to stuff like that too. I'm like, are there people in the stands? Even when we did the episode talking about the people showing up in suits, I'm like, these, these aren't Brooklyn Nets fans. I love seeing the New Jersey Nets jerseys in the stadium. Hey, if some of y'all new bandwagons are going to buy the new look stuff, that's fine, too, because this is going to change our fan base forever. There are kids now that want to be Nets fans that have become Nets fans. They will be rocking with this team forever. The narrative of there being no Nets fans will be dead soon. Our world, Nets world. Any thoughts, Hudson, before I play the last voicemail? Yeah, I just want to say to Nets fans, like, it's a good thing that bandwagons are hopping on, right? Like, that's a good thing. Don't feel like offended. Don't be like, you're not a real, shut up. Don't say that. 
don't 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 say that. That's just that's just annoying. It's a sign that your fan base is growing. It's a sign of success. It's a sign of good times. People should not care who is a fan of your team because then you're buying into the same you know Knicks related narratives of the Nets have no fans. And look, if you want to grow the fan base, if you want there to be more Nets fans, so that Nets Knicks argument can never ever be spoken of again. This is the way it happens. This is the way fan bases grow. Fan bases don't grow in success. That's why we didn't get more fans when we were garbage. We're good now. That's how fan bases grow. Enjoy it. Enjoy the bandwagoners. Accept them because we're all Brooklyn Nets fans, and that's fine. Nobody's coming over here when we were losing. Like, me as a Nets fan when we were losing, I was ducking. I wasn't telling people I was a Nets fan. I was like, I'm a LeBron fan, and yeah, I root for the Nets. Like, <laughs> it's different now. You see this in every league. There are kids across the world that are Chiefs fans because of Patrick Mahomes and them winning a Super Bowl. In the NBA, this same thing happened to the Warriors. The same thing happened to the Cavs. The same thing happened to the Celtics. Like when, like it, we've seen this before, y'all. The Lakers, the Bulls. We've seen this before, y'all. Welcome it. Our world, Nets world. Last one from our guy JJ. Hey Keith, hey Houston, it's JJ. Um, walking home from work this time. Uh, other than my last one where I was walking to work. Um, we win game one and two. Uh, both games very well played. Harden going down 43 seconds into game one is not the start I would have wanted. Um, I had a fun moment on Saturday night. I finished up the Sabbath and uh, in the car going back from the youth event with my dad. And I hear Mike James is uh, showing the point. And uh, I was like, Huh, that's weird. It must be in garbage time. I get home and turn on the TV, and there's still like half the game left. So I turn on my phone, and I go to Twitter, and I see that Harden was out injured. And I instantly went through like the five stages of grief in like a second. Like, there's no way this is going to happen. Oh, no. Like, what's going to happen next? And I realized, oh, wait, we're still winning. Uh, so we win game one, uh, and then game two is just an absolute trouncing. Uh, we stymied the Bucks offense. Uh, Giannis misses some free throws. Uh, they really just got a third and fourth in that 10 second violation. Let's go, Nets. Bro, yo, appreciate you, JJ. I had the same thing, bro. I, I had that moment where I was literally, I was by myself in the wedding, and I'm like, this is what a hater wants. Harden just got hurt. The Bucks are about to turn up and steal game one at home. I had to turn my phone off. People love that. Like, I was so present. I think the universe is all connected, man. For me to be present at my boy's wedding with all of my fan cave friends that I went through the fan cave with, I had to turn my phone completely off, and I did that for two, almost three hours, and we won the game. It is all good. Last but not least out here, reviews. We have four reviews that I'm going to read quickly. We are three away from 100. 97 reviews on the race to 100. The first review that I have to read comes from BD B, Bil, Bilbo Dildo. Bil, I, I don't even know why I tried to read that. June 1st, this person writes five stars. Great podcast, great reviews and analysis of the game. Not just with the Nets performance, but the game of basketball itself. They are growing fast. Facts say that. Appreciate you. Another five-star review from Sophia C., on June 2nd, she writes, Brooklyn. She listens to the pod. She's a Nets fan. She listens to the games and the chants. She knows. Thank you. Another five-star review from Why Nantic Why? Why Niantic Why? The Nets Podcast. The only Nets podcast worth listening to. On June 3rd, she wrote that. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I ain't going to, you know, I listen to a lot of Nets podcasts, but, hey, you could listen to what, that person said, and I feel you with that. Five stars. Dom Weeks writes, love the pod. The best Nets podcast for diehard fans and casual fans. John Boy Media never disappoints. Keep up the good work. Hey, we're just the next ones to come out from under the brand. Keith McPherson and Hudson Flynn talking Nets with young Hudson. Hudson and Keith. And that's all we've got for you. It was a long episode because I took some time off for a wedding. A long episode because we had to fit everything in. The chat was rocking. We appreciate y'all on YouTube that have literally been in here for almost an hour and a half, keeping the chat going and the conversation going. We'll be back soon with another episode after the next two 
games. Monday will be the next episode. But you'll see us on Twitter. We'll probably do some live streams, some stuff on Instagram. Uh, Hudson Flynn, do you have anything else to say to the good people? Let's keep it going. Let's keep the energy. Let's bring the energy from the Barclays Center. Let's put it on Twitter. Let's put it on Instagram. Let's keep the pressure on. Let's all let's all be in our homes. Let's all be watching with your friends. And let's all make sure that we're cheering. We're bringing the Nets that good energy from afar. And just keep it rolling. Because hopefully the next time we talk to you, we're going to be doing a review of this series. Ooh, a sweep would be nice. Monday to come in and say, hey, that was real. That was fun. It was over real fast. Subscribe, rate, review the pod. We will read it on the next episode. We got three more to get to 100. Appreciate y'all. Leave a voicemail. It's 201-870-0461. Keep it under a minute and you'll be on. Make sure you follow us at Talking Nets on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube. It's all growing. Everything is prospering as this team is prospering. We're just blessed and thankful to be a part of it. Make sure you guys get you some merch. You see my shirt. You see my shirt. It says scary hours are for playoffs. And if you look really close, there's some emojis and stuff. Go on the website and look, right? Shop.johnboymedia.com. Go to podcast merch. Hit talking nets. Promo code playoffs gets you 20% off. And that's all we've got. I'm proud of y'all, Nets fans. We deserve this. We deserve this light. We deserve this team. We deserve this time. I'm sorry I didn't make it to the Barclays Center, but you know what? I wasn't meant to be there. We got the results we wanted. Hudson and I are working on this brand and working on covering this team every single day. Also, big shout out to our guy, Twitchy, who lends a helping hand. We're doing what we got to do out here, and uh, we just appreciate y'all for rocking with us. So pretty soon, we will be back with another pod. Let's go Nets. Let's go Nets. Brooklyn. And that's the show. And that's the show. Good show. Good, fun show. Love the crowd. We got to start doing these more in the afternoon. We do them in the morning a lot just because that's when we're free. But we had a rocking crowd. I know Keith that, is thinking. I was like, we can't Keith do it in the like, We'll do it yeah. in the afternoon. I mean, we got Keith getting like like almost 100 people the last time he did one of those uh, those watch-alongs. I don't know. Maybe we should get that going. A little, little watching nets. Yeah. Yeah. Action. Looking forward to it. Love the community. Love everything. Love the reviews we're getting. Ever since we've been doing these live shows, we've been getting more reviews. So if you guys are still left in the chat, leave a review. Leave your Twitter handle. We'll shout you out. We, we say whatever is in the review, even if it's a bad review. So get, get me to say some nonsense because I know if it's nonsense, Keith will make me read it. <laughs> Yo, it's been so long since we've had a bad review, honestly. Like, I just went back and looked. Like, if you look at the notes, the screenshot I have has, like, of, of course, there's some goofies that are going to leave a one star rating or whatever. But pretty consistently, all the reviews are like, love these guys, great content, Nets fans, best Nets pod. That's just, man, that's just a, a product of the work put in. And like I said, we're prospering as this team is prospering. We appreciate you guys, you Nets fans. We're glad that you're repping hard and like we can narrate this season for you and we can be the Nets fans you live vicariously through. You know, I saw, I think I saw Luis in there like, Keith, I only got one Nets jersey. That's all right, bro. For a long time, all I had was a Darren Williams jersey. That's all I had. <laughs> you know, well, like I had my New Jersey Nets jerseys, but for the Brooklyn Nets, all I had was a number eight Darren Williams jersey and I hated his ass most of the time and I still wore that faithfully. So it's all good. Um, Let's see if there's anything else from the chat. I seen Asia in there. Asia was asking me about the Yankees, asking me about the Floyd Mayweather fight. No, nah, we ain't got no time for that. <laughs> we ain't got no time for that. The Yankees will be on in a couple hours. I'll probably be on Twitter uh, reconnecting with um, you know, the Yankee universe. But I did not check any of that Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul stuff. I knew that was a whole gimmick and scam. Um, yeah, that's all we got, Even man. Floyd said it. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, Floyd kept it 100. I did hear that. You know, he finessed. Uh, I'm just realizing now I can um, put like, you see how it says Jared Williams, Netson. Oh, look at that. Okay. Netson four. So like when we take questions from the chat, I'll bring the bring the question up like that. Netson four, bro. At this point, I'm like, sweep them. They, they look so outmatched. Like, like, I don't see Giannis going off for 50 
like Tatum went off for 50. We basically told you that. Giannis can't hit his free throws. He can't hit threes. He can't hit He's throwing up threes shots. and they're just right. clanking. They're just clanking off the iron. Uh, if I don't they see make, him going If they off. make contact with the iron, like it's, it's nothing. It's nothing from Giannis. And like, look, I feel like we're probably due for him to drop one big game. Maybe it's 45. Maybe it's something ridiculous. But, eh, to be honest, we're doing fine. I'm not worried. Pat B says live shows. Yeah, and actually, I think our guy uh, Suchith Rao was like, "Yo, you guys should do more live streams." I will do that. Um, I mean, Hudson, I know it's I know it's far, bro. But if you want to pull up Sunday, or Sunday might not be the best for you, but the games are Thursday and Sunday. I was gonna go to Philly, and I just canceled my trip to see the Yankees in Philly because I'm not wasting time and money to watch the Yankees lose. I will sit here right in the crib. We will do a live stream watch party. I'll play music during the commercials. I'll commentate on the game and I'll talk to you guys in the YouTube chat. So yeah, definitely look out for that. We need a, a new watch and nets for this round. And this round could literally be over Sunday. So I'll probably do one of those Thursday or Sunday. Um, I think Sunday would probably be the best bet, but I don't know. We'll see. It'd be fun. You guys get to watch me, you know, hunched over my computer trying to get these videos out so quickly. That's funny. <laughs> every game, every game I get at least one comment. It's like, how do you get these videos out so quickly? It's because I'm barely watching the game. I'm like, I'm hunched over my computer. Not exactly the most exciting watch, but I'll be there. I'll provide some content. We'll, we'll definitely figure something out. I mean, look, if and when the Nets get to the finals, like we're, we're there. We're in, the, we're in the stadium. So we're going to have some vlog content. We're going to have some other stuff. I know Keith, you know, we've got some connections for tickets. So Keith is probably going to be in the stadium making some live content. It's just going to be fun. It's just going to be good times. Yeah, that's all we've got. I got to run. I got to edit this podcast and then I got some other things to do. But uh, once again, thank you guys. Oh. Subscribe to the pod. Send this link to somebody that's like, yo, I'm kind of feeling the Nets. Like, I want to get into some Nets brands and some Nets podcasts and connect with other Nets fans. It's right here. It's all right here. So that's all we got. Once again, Keith McPherson, Hudson Flynn, talking Nets. We'll see you all in the next one.